What's up everyone, welcome to the second part of the 25k scoop final table review. This time with a sick 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 bluff, let's get into the action. Last time we saw a limitless bust and you see Dua getting a bit out of line as a mid stack. <laughs> let's see what faces this time. What's well, some interesting ICM spots, I mean this is pretty much what I take away from this final table. My opening range and big band defending range has got to be a bit tight on the final table. This is definitely my, like spots where I made mistakes in the past. It's quite interesting to watch this right now. Um, sixes should go in the market for sure. I mean, Isidro has been out of line, but this is even like not wow. Yeah, I don't think this is a profitable flat, but we'll see. I like the flop check. I expect Wang to like have a very narrow flatting range. I'm already surprised the sixes in there, so um, he probably connects very well with the sport, you know, with a bunch of king queen suited, ace checks, ten, check ten, king ten, you know, all of that stuff. He bets a third. Sure, a bit of protection. I prefer a check pick once again and full preflop, but yeah. Wow, gets me to the full sevens. Which I don't think is that unreasonable to fall, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Ace King with the open, see defense 8 9. Rune F is like, once again, a very tight opening range here, so I think he should definitely be C betting. And gets the fold just because, like, obviously, Queen 6 3 is not like an amazing board, but his opening range there is going to be very, very tight. It's only going to be like maybe 10% of hand, maybe 12, maybe like even less than that. So, uh, like, the tighter range, the more you can see that pretty much. Yeah, probably this is like still aggressive. I like it. Pocket force with spot, probably a fold. And this is probably so you do have fold equity here, but we saw the bit loose call in the first episode with the King 10 suit versus 13 big man rejam. From these positions, so I would definitely mark the force here against him. Now is healed or probably just got a flat here. I mean if he three bets, it's just like such a disaster for him with this mid stack right now, so he wants he wants to play small parts. So definitely expect a flat, but it's his healed or you know. We'll see. The first episode already. <laughs> like he, he's he's not scared, he's not scared, you know, like he's the guy to three bets here, and I mean it's working out. Probably since the wide opening range, a lot of fans have to fold as well. Um, but yeah, it's still so interesting that he just he doesn't care, man. He doesn't care. I like it. Like it's impressive, you know. Like I'm one, like I'm one side. I'm really interested in like playing ICM aware and then just playing very tired in the spots you have to. What is that big blind tank? All right, and obviously we just see a snap fold. Um, oh, they're going on break. All right, but on the other side, he still just goes for it, which I think is also admirable or like interesting to watch at least. All right, there we go. Seven and suited, not surprised to see an open here. Ruffle shove in a bit of a tricky spot with ace check. No fold equity. Probably makes this a fold, but um, once again, don't quote me on that. Probably a bit of a tough one. But yeah, he does ace the down and everybody else should fold. Sims with the open. Mohang has a clear fold. Yeah, and this is. I mean, you see the might get fancy with the 89 suited, but I think he should technically be just folding that preflop as well. Yeah, I, I, I really don't like this king queen flat. That's totally out of line. And so Vaz just instantly checks the flop. I mean, once again, Wang has to, like, he connects so well with the spot when he flats you there with, like, ace jack, ace queen, maybe some ace king because he doesn't really want to get it in. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. So he bets small on the turn, just takes it down. Uh, pocket eight's got to be an open jam here. Not much on Wang. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk much about him. Yeah, obviously just gets this one through. I like these five exits just in case like three people behind you go all in and you can still fold your hand. Which is cool. Probably with the open, lots of the flat. Huang should clearly be folding Queen 7 off here once again. Just look at Ruffle Chef and Romeo Pro. Like this is not your spot to do anything. Kind of an interesting spot for Probius though. I mean so has a decent amount of checks in his range, but it just comes down to how many suited ATC still flatting and other hands which just have to fold the flop and obviously with this stack it's um not gonna be easy to continue with all and even here versus a third party just gotta fold yeah like like probably should probably bet a bunch there just because it's Watson is once again in a weird spot is the mid stack. Uh King Queen Yeah, I don't know. Probably fine open, but Ruffer Shove is very short. I expect to see a stop and go here, you know, just to defend and then get it in some decent ball textures. Yeah, I think this is like a pretty clear decision here. And I think this is one of the spots where you can get away from your hand. 
how to see him. Um, so as seen in the bottom right, Kali Poker TV has uploaded these to their YouTube channel. There's a bunch of people that save these in their YouTube channel, and that's where I just downloaded it from. If I can say that, otherwise I just got and recorded myself. <laughs> Put the Kali Poker TV on there. As a shout out for them. And they open jam, yeah, I don't hate it. NBC Fold. Got you, man, I got you. Well, so what's once again this is what I mean, like just just being I see where Flanny is considered. It's kind of interesting though, because maybe like three bending is better in these spots. But they can see especially that place well as a flat. It's obviously fine. And definitely expecting the probies to just give up here. This is what we learned so far. Like the flying ranges are quite tight. People do like they give up a lot of hands post flop. And we saw a nice deuces bluff on the river that he did in last episode, but um yeah. Just be aware of what your opponent's range looks like. And that 5-7 off open is profitable as the open itself, so you don't need to like push it post flop all the time. Especially on such a bad, bad board texture. Ball gates with the open fail is fold is pretty damn interesting. But once again, it just makes sense with the stack sizes. Um, yeah. It's tough for me to analyze. I could. It's tough to like. Or like try to estimate if it's a profitable open or not. Um, don't hate just falling a pre flip though. But I would probably go for an open myself there. We'll check five calls to jam. How many big blends is that? Yeah, it's probably correct. Four and a half. No, it's actually a fold. I'm pretty sure check five off is a fold here. It's kind of funny there's aces as well, but yeah. Um yeah. Uh yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a fold. So yeah, once again interesting spot for Seal though. Ace Queen suited. There's great arguments just to be flatting here, but we saw the Ace Queen off three bed. Maybe seen Ace Queen seal three bed as well. Maybe just goes for it. Let's find out. I mean, I, I would definitely be flatting here once again with all the other short stacks, but not the seal door. Things do have some incentive to keep the short stack alive. Nah, not really. I'm mean, probably just rooting this table now. I think it's just like not a profitable. Call versus a four and a half big blind, somewhat tightish. Like for four and a half big blind jamming range in the button, that range is going to be even more tighter or like a bit tighter than usual. And then you're just not performing well with the check five off. So he pierces the three with the threes. Yeah, could be fine. I don't know. I would lean towards this four and pre flop moment myself. You'd up greens. Um, let's see if he bets small on the flop. I'll just check the back. Yeah, what up, Roland? Yeah, I don't hate to check, but obviously, you see, the probably ch still checks a bunch of good hands here, like Aces and Kings. Um, non the turn. He checks twice to you. I mean, you don't really have many 4x. You do are still as ace and kings, but not that often. I don't hate a bet here to protect your hand, get some value from ace king, ace queen. But um, just checking seems also fine. I mean, there's like your hand is really, really vulnerable right now, as you see. You do has 12 outs to, make, to win this hand, it's 25%, so folding that out is pretty nice as well. And that's what I mean. Like, it's just a, I'm not a big fan of three bidding as considered there, and same with the ace queen. I think it's just not your spot to be too aggressive, but. I said it's just a zero space die. Yeah, expect an ace check to just open jam and take it down here. And pocket threes is a clear fold. Queens is just a three-bed jam. I'd be surprised to see anything else here. I mean, yeah, doesn't make doesn't really make much sense. It's gonna be a spot for Watson if he gets jammed on because that rejang range is not that wide. I think pocket nines could be a fold here almost. <laughs> I mean, this is like a 17 big blind regen. Yeah, it could almost be a fold to be honest. Don't expect older to be regen too wide here. Alright, queen eight now. I, I skip some of the hands, just otherwise, we're sitting here forever. What do you guys expect the ace to suit on the button to do? It's so weird, man. I wouldn't be surprised to see an open fold. Given what we've seen so far, a limp could be fine as well, but yeah, I think it's either a limp or fold here, and I lean towards seeing a fold. 
Weil er sie da sind. And probably is definitely gonna raise this gonna be raising this one up and then we should see a fall from the ace twos. Don't expect any surprises here. This race. And that should just go into the muck. Yeah. Um yeah. Just a bunch of folds and probably opens and this is just gonna be folds as well. Interesting open with the King Jack off here out of nowhere. Like I, I wonder if these are even correct. Once again, Romeo probably short, Rafa Chaff really short. You have Probis and Savats behind you. But this is not a spot where they get two out of line as well, I think. But yeah. Well Linda instead of open four, just given all the short sacks, you don't really want to race and invest in a big blind into the pot. Yeah, I like defend. I expect Visa to be opening pretty tight here. This is kind of weird on the spot texture, to be honest. Oh, this is this is so weird. I mean, you have 11 big blinds in A3 duels with an MP open. Usually you just check jamming. Wow, he checks it back on the flop? What? I'm quite surprised here. I'm really surprised to see a flop check back. I think this is also just a board where he should be betting a lot. I guess maybe with the big blind, with the big blind when he has 9 bigs. You want to check a bunch, but... Um... I think you can just bet a quarter and uh, there and just get so many folds. Even with like H-Jack, man, it's such a good spot for you. Yeah, no, it was on the river. I think a flop bet is better there, but once again, kind of interesting to just check it down there. And here's such a tight opening range there, I think. I'm already surprised you can check off studio now. This is just a replay, that's the reason I can skip through it. This is 25k scoop replay. And yeah. Wouldn't be surprised once again to see an open fold here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the cards are face up. Obviously, it's not live. <laughs> um, I just threw it with the defend. Last joke, what the fuck? You never know. So this time he decides to defend, and now we just expect an open push, I guess. And we see the jam. And the snap call. I mean, there's enough draws out there. I think that's fine. I'll probably upload it to YouTube over the next day, couple of days. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. Yeah, you definitely never know with Twitch chat. But yeah, good night, Kolo. Thank you for the sub, man. And we see you're definitely defending here. Good board texture. We see a third part. You see that's not going anywhere. I think you can occasionally raise this hand as well. Obviously, never folding. Sometimes flat, sometimes raise. Pretty good turn for so what? The thing is, like, you see, now also has a gut shot with his hand. Um, that's a bit weird. Just goes for a snap mark. Nice. I mean, he's got to be careful as I said with the short sex. I don't hate it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is just so crazy to watch. Every spot is like, I'm so confused about literally every spot that I see here. Comes in with the steel. Seems reasonable. Seems very reasonable. You cut. You don't really want to open jam here, I don't think. You don't really want to limp. Seems nice to mix in as a race. And then just fold. All the defense is 6-5. Yeah. Hmm. 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 But this big plan is interesting. I think Rumor Pro is fine sea betting this, just given that his range is not going to be super wide when he opens up 17 big bands or 16 big bands on the button, right? So I think he's doing still okay. It just depends how wide he expects to be so to defend his big blind. That's what I would assume here. Checks the back door. I mean, also pretty unreasonable. You just have ace three off and <laughs> queen seven six, and it feels like the big blind is connecting fairly often with the spot. Um, yeah, I can't get too much into this. I don't really know what this is. I I don't like a person here. I want to be a bit more polarized with my turn needs than that. But yeah, could be fine as well. It's not something I would be doing. Ace three just has to market there. 
I mean, Huang was a bit out of line before, and I, I wouldn't be surprised seeing him open the queen check. We kind of see, like, the short stacks being, like, doubling up now. So, Rune F's and he's 20 bigs, 20 bigs here, and these guys have, like, th 15, 13. So, definitely have an interesting sh uh, shift there. Oh, that's a very interesting open with these 10. Uh, yeah. It's just so interesting, man. Like I, 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 I just think about it so differently than these guys in some spots. Like with CS10 here, it's just it seems like, seems like a hand that's good enough to jam. Um, and doesn't seem like a hand you wanna. I mean, he would be raised fold in there. I'm pretty sure against the rejam, maybe not. I mean, I'd be quite surprised if he raised calls then instead of open jam himself. But yeah, I feel like an open jam is just the best spot there. Before I said your turn, you mean a large size and correct? Yeah, usually yes. I mean, I think it's fun to have a small sizing as well, but I'm not sure if one elite, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not, I use a more polarized turn leading strategy than going for a third part usually. Yeah, I'm surprised to see some folds there. No. You see the fold in the queen turn off in the hijack, man. <laughs> I mean, I guess he had a bigger stack beforehand where it's not a likely lose it at all, but now with 40 big buns, he's pretty damn vulnerable, so not surprised. Jacks with the open raise. I mean, reasonable. I wouldn't hate limping a D there, just given what happened in the past, but... Um... Interesting the defense do for Sudo, by the way. I would definitely just mark the pre flop once again against that 18 big and open raising range to these stacks with these other short six on the right side of the table. I don't think you're going to be making money with that defend. It was the third part you got to be calling your hand. Now it's interesting to see what he does in the ace turn. Um, firm. If I remember correctly, it should be mostly checking here, but it also makes sense to bet in some way, just because Watson doesn't have that many ASX and checks kind of needs protection. There's still like a bunch of fans want to call, but I think check technically should be checking here, and there's a check. And now with this five, you are pretty much never good here on the river. You have a bunch of six X. You could you could bluff here, I guess. Just taking it to show is also fine. And I think checks might check back the river here just because it's really tough to get value as well. There's still some check raises in Watson's range. Alright. Let's see what Romeo pro, pro does here with the screen. I think that's a very, very interesting spot. 16 big blinds, 17 big blinds. Yeah, that is very interesting. We have 6.5 blinds of the A screen offset here. <laughs> you don't want to. I I don't know to be honest, I, I, okay okay he goes for the open jam. So yeah once again this is like pretty much the effective open jam he goes for here which I like. I think that's what I would be doing as well. Almost lean towards like if he was I would be interested to see what he does with like eighteen big blinds there you know. I think this is where the spot gets interesting. Probably Stephanie opening here and we just see folds. Force is like a crystal clear fold queen unsuited. Probably a fold. We haven't seen that many like three bets from Probius yet, but that's also because the opening range has been pretty tight. I expect him to open here again. Like he's been pretty offline spot so far. Yeah, I don't want to like share who everyone is. I think it's quite easy to get a bunch of information on a lot of these guys. Just yeah, like some people don't really want to have their online name shared, so I'm not doing that. And now I do expect to jam by Romeo Pro for sure. No traps, please. <laughs> Dude. How oh, does he just go? F what? Yeah, I mean, you always look stupid when you run to aces by the button here, but Huang has been out of line enough. We've seen a bunch of ping by him. Obviously, it's always easy for me to observe that when I see the interesting flat there. And once again, this is something I gotta do more as well. Like, just these three bets instead of jams. They're so good. 
the mind game is. I mean, it's the funny thing is it's not an actual mind game. Like, he's actually hoping for Huang not to be trapping here. That's the fun part. It's just, it's pure honesty there. Yeah, this is probably just a walk. Did he get the walk? Yeah, he did. Queen time with the open, knights of the flat. Rob Chef should be folding, Queen Jack folding. A seal door. I think this is just an overcall. Yeah, especially with pocket eights, nice and easy. Set mine. A clear fold from the big blind. Hmm. With Queen 10, you have like a nice hand to see bet. I don't hate it. So, but Stephanie has to fold, and you see, has to fold as well. This should just go through. I would be really surprised to see a call here from any of the two guys. And yeah, it's pretty nice. I like just jamming better, and nah, definitely better to like three bet. So, you can fold if both guys go all in. Yeah, generally you're more polarized with the big sizing. But if wrong champ there, we're only pro head a screen. He's calling. So he limps to check seven. And probably just stabs the flop and takes it down. No check. Um but yeah. Should also be reasonable. I don't know, like it's it's tough. The ranges are very different here than the normal scenario that I'm used to, right? Because it's a finer table. So I'm not quite sure how the range attacked. I mean, it makes sense to check a decent amount of hands on the flop as well. But, yeah. Let's have a look here. Yeah, like, deuce is a clear fold here. This is just wrong being one. And he just takes it on pre-flop. Tens with the all in. There's no calling hand. I some suit it should be a fold. And he goes for the race. Um Yeah, once again like reasonable. It's really tough for me to analyze all of these spots, just it depends how many like how much I blame back, how how wide they're flatting. It's not like Probis is gonna go with like Queen seven offsuit here and three bets the button, you know. I feel like he's opening very wide, but he picks his three bet spots carefully because he's making enough money or just pre flop already by going for wide opens. But yeah. I mean obviously this time he runs into kings. I'm not quite sure. This is just what I'm seeing here, how complicated fine tables are in MTTs and how far away we are from kind of solving it. <laughs> but there's so many things to consider with like every move you make. Every step you take. <laughs> but yeah, definitely expecting a, a fold here or maybe an out-of-line for a jam. The SM suited has decent equity when called. <laughs> but uh, as I said, like once again I've seen the hands. Probably hasn't been that out of line yet. I expect just see a fold. No, I mean ASM suit is already close to no I imagine. Yeah, which is open fold there, I think. I mean now that I'm in the zone and watch this fine table for a bit, man, like I I gotta be so much tighter. <laughs> All right, check eight. Seven nice units should be pretty clear. Defend. Yeah, yeah, it's suited. He would definitely not open base. I'm lost it from that position. I can guarantee guarantee you that. Kind of interesting spot. Um, this is like one of these spots. If probably is like given his opening range, and he probably see bets all of the hands that he opens here in this spot. You might have a profitable jam with 7-9 here, just based on the amount of folds you're getting. It's obviously like a tough one to pull off. We might just see a little raise here. Like I wouldn't hate a raise to 200k here, but folding obviously seems fine as well, even with that small sizing. King Queen suited at the open. Interesting. I probably would just re the ace check here, but maybe defending is better with the other short stacks. But I probably says like such a wide opening range here that I expect to see the all in. 
Uh, interesting spot for him now, though. 21 big blind rejam. You probably have to mark the king queen suited. Depends how many, like, king jack off, king 10 off hands under 3 by jam range. And I don't think that many, so it's probably fold. And he does exactly that. Alright. Aces won't be getting any action here. Wait, what? Okay, he's still defense 3 8 suited. And then just max it on the flop. Yeah, we, we, he doesn't give a fuck. He just doesn't give a fuck. I like that open jam very much. That's just going th getting through. Ace king with the open. Ooh. I like the flat very much from Isilda once again. Oof. Sexy. Sexy. Mm. Should probably see Ace king like some percentage of the time. Isilda checks it back. Seems okay with top set. Expecting a check on turn now from Watson and then you see they probably bet smallish, like a third. Watson is calling. Ooh, a bit bigger. All space are pretty much straightforward with so many so much dollars on top. I would disagree. I feel like none of this is like straightforward. There were so many interesting spots already, I think. We saw some button open limbs that were interesting. Wow. This is also very interesting. I mean you see the snap check like the turn. Snap bets like forty percent on the turn. Eh, on the flop I mean. And then snap for bits. Snap C bet or snap bets forty percent on the turn. God damn it. <laughs> and now in the room kind of interested. No he thinks it through. Bets to thirds. I, I like this is one of these spots where you feel like people don't have many bluffs at all. Um I'm not sure if Isilo finds all of the bluffs here. It's like in, I don't know, like a random 10-9 of hearts that he bets occasionally and stuff like that. But I think it's just a bit unlikely. With the open. And... Pff, I'm given his opening range. He should just be getting in checks pre-flop here. Yeah, I'm not surprised by this. And we saw like a deuces open. That they didn't see again, but... That should probably indicate it. Comes up with a three-bit call and can't get there. I love the race right now. And definitely just seeing a 40 with a 93. I mean what we see from Pro BC is like I think what is quite interest interesting is like very well timed aggression. You know, there was nothing that that he did that was like crazy offline, you know, no crazy four bit plus preflop or some bullshit like that. We just see that he takes the profitable open spots when he sees them and just wins, like accumulates chips this way. Went for that one three by bluff with Ace of Suit versus Seed was open. But very well timed the aggression, not going like overboard post flop, not choosing large sizings post flop, which is actually interesting that I think. I will note down. Because all of these sides have already put enough pressure out there on your opponents. Um, he says to bluff to three with a small sizing, kind of protection bet, kind of bluff bet, like bluff raise. And he calls the 5 6. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's kind of weird, to be honest. You never really want to be bet calling 6 5 like an old man out of position on the flop. Because it's really tough for you to continue. If you, uh, and often you face the turn bet as well, and then you just have to fold because you're only improving on eight cards. Um, I mean, obviously, with the six and the five, he improves as well, but that's about it. This is a pretty great run out for him. Watson knows that he doesn't have the best hand at this point, besides maybe like an ace deuce occasionally. James' fighter would be second flop, no? Yeah. Wouldn't be too unreasonable to be three better than the flop. In my opinion, it just goes for the jam, and I don't see how he calls here. I mean, he's got to be turning like ace check into a bluffy or something like that. So, yeah. Would be a bit of a fast stretch there. Blind scope. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at these stacks right now. Look at these stacks right now. That's pretty insane. All right. 
<laughs> Decent stack sizes. Then he showed like a bows. Alright, you see the this is like uh, uh, out of line. Wait, this is just so out of line. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Just just get to the level, boys, where you, where you can be second in chips with 33 big binds with a bunch of short sticks and casually open the 680 from middle position with the chip lead on the button. And the 25 core for 5k as well, where everybody's like a good regular at least. And even the recreationals are better than me, you know? <laughs> oh, fuck. Checks is appropriate. I definitely see him like stabbing here. See the open fold that you can take out. Yeah, that was the only time before that he was like totally out of light. Yeah. I Misu mean, is definitely a bit of a few player, and I don't mean that in like, a negative way, but he is. He definitely goes for it when he sees the spot or when he fears it. As far as I know. Um, yeah. Just gonna be an open from pro base as usual on the takedown. And another one. Yeah, there's no way he defends this with his stack sizes right now. I mean, maybe. Ah, it's so weird, man. 570, 1.6, 1.7. Especially against Broby's, like, wide opening range. Yeah, you should probably defend here. But it's, it's still, like, close. Yeah, I don't hate to fold it so well. It's tough to... It's tough. Like, these spots are really, really complicated. Because you just have to figure out how much money am I making pre-flop pre by flooding here, and then... In this exact setup, is it even worth it to go for it? How's my post for playability, right? I have to fold versus a lot of C bats and even versus triple barrels, it's so tough for me to call down. Mm. Makes sense to be tied at preflop, but that allows Brobies to open hands like Queen 7 off as well. Like he just he's in such an amazing position, right? From here on out, like he's winning this tournament so often. It's incredible. Like this is the dream spot everybody wants to have at some point. Um, yeah, but you also have my blockers with queen 10 again. High card value is quite essential at short stack depth. Weird spot for Hung. Yeah, well, he should probably just flat here. I mean, look at the stack sizes. With him being like second in chips, I don't think he should be three betting, but he goes for it. I and mean, Probus has been opening wide, and Hung likes to go for it as well. Uh, Probus is from Hungary, I think. I just expect a fold here. Um, yeah, not surprised by any of these folds. He still does probably just open jamming and taking it down. Um, yeah, Ruffle Chef is gonna bust here, I guess. Five big blinds, ace check into checks. Gets the double up. No surprise there, I mean, for five big blinds, you can't fold. Um, force now on the button. Probably a jam for 14 blinds with these other short stacks. And he's just getting this through. Alright, this is where you get some speed in this. <laughs> Going through smoothly right now. And probably just gonna open and win this. Yeah. I mean this is gonna be I'm gonna like skip through this a bit quicker now. Just because Oh, it's the first or like the second three bed from Probius. A screen just comes in with the call and it's just like so sick. No, he just has to bet like a third or a quarter again and like what the fuck are you doing with this queen? You're already hating yourself, probably coming in with the call and then seeing on the turn. Yeah, goes a bit bigger this time around. This is like always so dirty for his queen, like it's so disgusting. He makes the call, but what are you doing on the turn now? <laughs> I think probably, probably just gives up here, but imagine he bets like a third here again or a quarter. Oh shit, I mean that works as well. Would be sick for a sealer to turn his hand to a bluff now. It's kind of interesting to be honest, let's think about this. So, especially with Probis flop sizing, I kind of think he doesn't have aces there, kind of my opinion, but whatever. Um, and he probably doesn't 3-bet pocket 8s pre-flop. So like, besides the hand, like, 
10 8 offsuit, maybe. He doesn't really have that many boards. I could see a jam here with his queen. Yeah, I don't hate it. The question is if Probius is coming in with that hero call or not. So, obviously, the thing with this rejam is you have 2.3 million. While there's a stack of 1.5, 1.6, 2 million, 1 million, 1.6. And this is probably the reason this bluff is not good. I'm thinking right now, like I kind of like to turn the hand into a bluff. But if you get called here, you're like fucked. <laughs> it's like such a disaster for you to bust here an eighth with your stack size. And that is the issue. This is exactly the issue. This is perfect. The perfect example. By calling this 3 by pre flop is a bit dicey, but seems fine. Calling the flop is probably a mistake just because this exact spot. And yeah, that's the reason like it's such a nice spot to have probably stacked there. Ten off seems a bit out of line pre law. Yeah, but like with the stack sizes I could see that. Um being location through. I mean it's a really tough call to make to be honest. But against the sealed door. The check of spades, kind of a nice card, because you do not block, because, I mean, he flats ace-queen off, so I guess he could be flatting, like, ace-check of spades, small on the spot, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, not surprised that he goes deep in the tank here. Either he's a 10, you know, or he doesn't. There's no delay. Just an old command. Wow. I mean, I'm actually excited. Like, this is a tough spot. You see, just buffing hands are gonna be... There's not gonna be that many. And his screen is one of them, and he actually busts. This is, like, a pretty big disaster, honestly, if we see the bust in, like, 8th base for 90k, given his stack and these other guys. And this is probably the reason Ace screen is just a fold in the flop. But, um, I mean, I'm just... I'm just a Twitch chat fanboy right now that gives his opinion, you know. This is an interesting hand, but I think... That's like pretty much a big issue there. I assume suicide, yeah, it's definitely fucked. But he has check 9 pre. I mean, yeah, you also have to think about his calling range. I mean, you see, he just still has aces there. You can't forget about that. He definitely has aces that he would be value jamming on the river, I think. He's gonna have aces, he's gonna have like ace 10 suited, king 10, queen 10 suited, check 10 suited. Pocket 8, pocket 7s. Kind of his value range. Could he still take this time with ace king there? Ace king, sure. Yeah, ace king for sure. He might fall a jam preflop, I don't know. Like against Probius, it's tough. Like maybe Ace Queen off, you want to fall a jam as well. Like it's actually an insane hero call by, by King Jack, I wanna I wanna mention that. Because if you really think about his serious flatting range, right? Against what you expect Probius three bang range to be, he's, you can expect him to like fall by jam hands like ace queen and ace check occasionally there. And then on this board texture, you have to expect him to have these ace queen ace checks that he floats on the flop with. Then you have to expect him to turn it into bluff versus all of the 10x that he has, all of the ace king aces he has. I mean, it's a pretty insane hero call, honestly. Like that's a, that is a sick, sick hero call, and that hero call is an absolute disaster for you, though. But it's it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a tough one to make. I think it's a good spot to conclude the second part of this review series. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Crazy, crazy bluff in the end, there, guys. If you want to see more poker content, I'm doing poker clips on my Instagram page. It's Belair on Instagram. Um, I'm also doing some giveaways there, behind the scenes stuff, if you're interested in that, make sure to drop me the follow there, otherwise see you in the next one, take care.